Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iPadOS Beta 5 is out for developers and soon to public beta testers. By the time you're watching this, it very well could be out. At the time I'm filming this, it's not out. So usually within a day or so, the public beta is released. Now, as requested, I'm covering iPadOS in a separate video. I already covered iOS in a previous video. I'll link it in the description as well as up at the top here. So you can take a look at it. Now, to cover all of the different iPads, I have the oldest on the right with the iPad Air 2, the oldest supported device anyway with iOS 13 and iPad OS 13. And on the left, iPad Pro 12.9 from 2018. So anything in between as far as iPad minis or iPad Air, the newer iPad Air should be the same or better as far as performance is concerned, all the way up to the iPad Pro. So let's talk about the build number, then we'll talk about the actual changes, performance, speed, battery life, and then maybe a geek bench and maybe some bugs I have as well. So let's take a look at that build number. The build number is 17 a 5547 D and it's the same build that we have on iOS 13 on iPhones. And that D means we're getting closer to a final release where we'll see Apple start pushing out more and more betas to get it closer to that letter a, and then a GM or golden master where they finally release it to the public. So we expect the final release in September, as I've mentioned before. Now with this particular update, there are 45 known issues remaining that goes across iOS 13 and iPad OS. There's also 13 resolved issues. And one of the things they've resolved is with the iPad, it now properly joins a Wi-Fi network when Wi-Fi is turned back on through control center. So when you go in here, you turn off Wi-Fi, and then you turn it back on. Sometimes it wasn't reconnecting properly. They've fixed that. Also, if you use WhatsApp and some banking apps, they've fixed those as well. Now, one of the first changes they've made has to do with dark mode. So if we go into settings, go to display and brightness, where there's appearance, we can switch from light to dark mode. And they've made this a nice transition from light to dark mode. It just has a nice fade back and forth. It's just a nice little change that we expect from Apple with really refinements as far as that goes. The next thing is going to please a lot of people as far as the arrangement of the home screen goes. And again, under display and brightness and settings, if you scroll to the bottom, you now have app icon size. So you can go more that we have here. That's kind of what we have with iPad OS, or we can go bigger, which makes it look more like iOS 12. And if we scroll from left to right there, we, we no longer get our widgets pulling in from the side like we have on the iPad Pro here on the left. So where you can bring in your widgets on the side, you can't do that anymore if you switch to that larger view. So bigger view, we go out and vertically, we have four apps with the larger view across the side if you have the iPad in landscape and five apps across the top. If you go into the more view, you now have six apps across the top and five vertically. So it just condenses them when you bring the, the different widgets or today view in. So it's nice, but I kind of like the newer view. It makes it feel more useful to me personally, but you can change it if you don't like that. And I like that they've brought that. Now, one of the things they've fixed has to do with when you haptic touch or 3d press since iPads don't have that. Let me switch this back to the view. I like more here when the, when you 3d press or hold on Safari, you now have new tab, new private tab that wasn't there before. As far as the new tab, it's come back. So it's nice that they've just brought that back. Now also there's some new options for mouse pointers. So this is really nice. Let me go on my iPad pro and show you under settings. If we go to accessibility and then we go to touch, and then we go to assistive touch down towards devices or pointer devices where we have our mouse settings. There's some new pointer style settings as far as its size adjustability. So we can really adjust this quite a bit. Uh, there's just more options here. And like we had before, we have different colors and things for the pointer. And that's really nice that they've added that just some more subtle changes that might help people if you're having a hard time seeing the pointer or the pointer is just too big to begin with. Now they've made a little bit of a change to the volume adjustment. So if you go to a volume volume adjustment here, the actual volume slider is a little bit smaller. And then on iPhones, there's haptic feedback when you go and adjust the volume, but there's just more adjustments in between. So instead of having uh, only 10 or so volume adjustments, it seems there's quite a few more as you press the buttons up and down. So you have more 
refinement or more settings as far as volume is concerned. Now, if you've used the Shortcuts app, something they've removed that they're going to return later on has to do with the automations that were at the bottom. With an iPhone, you could just tap and use the NFC reader to actually uh, set up automations. They've removed that tab and they're going to bring it back, but for now there must have been some problems or something because they actually removed it. So that should be back later on. Now they've made some changes to the share sheet as well. So if you go into a website, maybe I go to an older video I have here on my Zolo Tech website, and then we want to share that you'll see the share sheet has changed. It's broken into sections now. So we have copy at the top with our apps along the top. Then we have specific things to Safari. So we have add bookmark, add to favorite, find on page, add to home screen, and then our normal ones at the bottom. And then we can edit these actions and you'll see again, it's grouped with Safari and other actions and favorites at the top. So it's a nice little change. And it also looks different if you didn't catch that. The text is black and white. And so the text is white here for in light mode, the text is dark. So let's switch over to, to light mode here. We'll go back and you'll see the text is now black over a white background. So they've changed it up a little bit. It looks a little different and I think it's a little bit nicer. Now, if we go into the home app, let's swipe over here, if we go into the home app, you'll see we have a wallpaper and they've updated this wallpaper. So if we go to edit and then we hit the arrow next to the word home and then we scroll down on our settings, we now have choose from existing, take a photo for wallpaper, but the new wallpapers are here. And so you'll see there's some new ones across the wallpapers are all different and whatever you set syncs across all your devices. So if I want to switch it to yellow or blue or maybe this darker blue here, it will change. It takes a moment because like I said, it syncs across all devices. There we go. It's changed. And I think you get the idea there. Now, as far as little subtle changes, they've actually changed some of the con connectivity. If you have an LTE version of this, they've made the size more consistent across the top. So the Wi-Fi and the LTE signal basically match the height of the battery that's in the upper right. So they've just made a small tweak to that and it's really nice. Something very subtle, but again, Apple is refining things here. Now, if you haven't noticed, there's a little bug I think that I've found on, on my iPad down in the bottom right on the dock. It's actually bunching apps together. So I don't know if this is a new, is a new feature, but if we go into the app, you'll see here it's bunched together with something behind it. And you'll see there's Google behind it, but I have no way to access that. So I don't know if this is a new feature coming later, but it's just something I noticed. And then as far as weird responsiveness issues, actually YouTube has been fine on this since I've been using it, no issues with touch, but I have had weird touch issues specifically on the iPad pro where sometimes it just doesn't work. I could go into settings, scroll, and it just stops working properly. So hopefully they fix that. I haven't seen that fixed yet, but it seems to be better than it was, but there's still some issues here and there. Now, as far as performance on the iPad Air 2, it's actually quite good. If you saw my iOS 13 video yesterday, it wasn't so good. It just wasn't responding well. It didn't work well and I rebooted it and now it's fine. So I don't know what that was. Maybe it just initially was updated, but it seems to be nice and fast, no issues with scrolling, nothing like that. And apps seem to open pretty quickly. You'll see Monument Valley 2 here. I'm not sure I've played this for a long time or ever on the iPad Air 2, but you'll see load times here. We'll just wait for it to continue. And there we go. So the game is loaded. And of course, it seems to work fine. So I wouldn't expect any major issues as far as that's concerned. Now there's an iPad tip I wanted to share with you that I haven't heard anyone mention. It's been there since beta one and I've been using mail now and it seems to be much better than it was. There's still a few bugs and hiccups. Sometimes touch responsiveness isn't great, but overall it seems to be working for me now. Now, if you have an external keyboard or an Apple smart keyboard or whatever with an iPad or iPad pro, and you want to select multiple email to delete them. All you have to do is hit edit, tap the first one, hold shift on the keyboard and tap the last one. And it will select all of them in between, just like it would on a Mac. If you selected all of them, then if you want to delete them, hit delete and it will delete them all at once. Usually sometimes you have to hit it a couple times 
It's not that great. It is a little bit buggy sometimes, but that feature is there and it's something I use all of the time. Now, as far as battery life is concerned, my iPad pro 12.9 is actually my main computing device when I'm not editing video. So I can give you a pretty good idea of battery here. And I've run all of the different betas on this and you'll see over the last 10 days here, it actually has not been that great. In fact, the best was five hours and 35 minutes of screen on time, 40 minutes of screen off time. And it's just not that great. I usually get about 50% battery life left after using it a few hours. If I'm watching video, you'll see, I use Netflix quite a bit on here and it just was not great. I would say maybe seven or eight hours of use where it used to be 10. I would expect that to get better, hopefully with this particular beta, but only time will tell as far as that's concerned. Now I did run a geek bench on these devices just to see how they are for you. For those of you that are interested in that, let's take a look at that. Now on the left with the iPad pro, you can see, I have 5,052 for single core, 17,871 for multi-core. That's pretty good. On the right, I have the iPad air two with 1,801 for single core, 4,361 for multi-core. Compared to the previous version of iOS or iPad OS, it's basically the same. It's very close and performance seems to be good overall. That's it for iPad OS beta five. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And also if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description as I always do. If you'd like to see more of these iPad OS specific videos, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you'd like to see more of these videos as soon as they're released, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up or a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.